Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into medical school and other professional programs. Welcome back, aspiring doctors and statisticians. Let's delve into the intriguing world of statistics, where the analysis and interpretation of data take center stage. You'll find that understanding these concepts will not only aid in acing the MCAT, but also in understanding the scientific literature and making informed decisions in your future medical practice. So let's jump into this very important lesson. Beginning by talking about the measures of central tendency. These provide a single valued representation for the middle of the data set. The mean, also known as the average, is the sum of all values divided by the number of values, whereas the median is the middle value when the data is arranged in ascending or descending order. This is a very robust measure as it is the least susceptible to outliers. The mode is the data point that appears the most often in the set. And these skewed graphs show us why the median is so nice. We see that the median is almost in, always in the center of the graph, which makes sense. That's the definition of what the median is, right? And we can see that skew kind of leaves it in the center each time, whereas the mode can be easily uh, moved around, as can the mean. See how low the average is on a left and right skew? That doesn't actually tell us much about the data. It tells us about where the outliers are. So when we have big skews, we usually want to evaluate the median, not the mean. Let's start with a core concept here, probability. First, imagine rolling a dice. The outcome of one roll doesn't impact the outcome of the next, right? Or at least it shouldn't. These are called independent events. But let's say that you're drawing cards from a deck without replacing them. Well, the probability of drawing a certain card changes after each draw. These are known as dependent events. And what about mutually exclusive events? Picture a tossed coin. It can't be heads up and tails at the same time. It's one or the other, the superposition of the quarter. Where this becomes really important is when you're trying to calculate probability. For example, we've got independent events, as with the dice. Say, for example, you want to calculate what are the odds that you roll a three two times in a row? Well, you have six options, right? They're six-headed dice. So you just multiply one six by one sixth, and you get your answer. It's one over 36. Whereas dependent events, like the cards, if we start with a full deck, so we've got 52 cards there, we draw one card, and we don't put it back, well, now our denominator is 51. So we're going to have a higher probability of that second event happening than the first event happening. But if we need them to happen sequentially, we still have to multiply those probabilities together. Now, let's dive into a quick statistical testing overview. Let's say you're investigating a new drug and have two groups, one that received the drug and one that didn't very common on an MCAT passage. You calculate a p-value to test your null hypothesis, the claim that the drug has no effect. If the p-value is less than your significance level, usually 0.05 for the MCAT, you'd reject the null hypothesis, providing evidence that your drug works. Confidence intervals are a range of values within which the true population value lies with a certain level of confidence. Imagine measuring blood pressure in a sample of patients. Your 95% confidence interval might range from 120 to 130 milligrams mercury. This indicates that you're confident the true average of blood pressure in the population is within that range with 95% certainty, which also means there's a 5% chance that you're wrong and the mean could be way outside or on the skews or on the tails. Moving on to distributions, a normal distribution is like a bell curve of an MCAT score in the middle here. Most scores are in the middle, decreasing as you move away, either lower or higher. Skewed distributions are like income distribution. A few high earners skew the distribution rightwards. In contrast, if a class did poorly on a test with a few exceptions, the distribution would be left skewed. So to help you remember left skew, here is your organic chemistry exams, normal distribution. This is like the MCAT and right skew. This is like income. Lastly, data presentation plays a crucial role in communication and the MCAT. And while there are a ton of graphs you need to know, I think after college, you can probably figure out a bar chart. But box and whisker plots, that's something that I forgot all the time when I was preparing for my MCAT. So I just want to re-explain box and whisker plots one more time for you. And I'll trust that you can do a pie chart on your own. A box plot, also known as a whisker plot, is a graphical representation that provides a snapshot of a data set's distribution. This type of plot consists of a rectangular box bounded by the lower quartile, Q1, and upper quartile, Q3. These mark the 25th and 75th percentiles of the data, respectively. The line inside the box, known as the median, marks the 50th percentile of the data. And the whiskers, these little guys, that extend out from the box represent the spread of the results of the data. 
or the maximum and minimum. Sometimes they can also be the smallest and largest observations within 1.5 times the interquartile range, or IQR, which is the distance between Q1 and Q3 from the box. Any data points that fall outside the whiskers are considered outliers and are often represented by individual points or asterisks. Box plots are really, really useful because they give a visual summary of the data's central tendency, dispersion, and skewiness all in one glance. Understanding these statistical tools and principles will give you a solid foundation for the data interpretation and essential skill on your MCAT. Every section will benefit from this. Thank you so much for watching our video on MCAT stats, and I will see you next time.